now the user is able to create a brand new customized memory game. Our goal in this segment is to be able to allow the user to play that game in the main activity, in the main screen. And so we launch the creation flow with the start activity for result. So we're going to capture the result of whatever the child activity has done, the creation activity, in the on activity result method. What we'll do first is just check if the request code is equal to the request code that we launched this with, which is create request code. And if the result code is equal to result code activity dot result okay. So if that's the case, then let's retrieve the custom game custom game name out of the data intent parameter. So get string extra extra game name. And so you'll remember the reason I'm, I'm doing this is because in the create activity, as soon as the operation to create the game is done, then we set the extra game name to be the newly created game. So that's what we're retrieving right here in the main activity. If for whatever reason the custom game name is null, then something has gone wrong. And let's just log that as an error. And we'll return early. Otherwise, we know that custom game name is non null, so we have a valid game. So I would like to create a method called download game with this custom game name. Let's create this function. And the idea of this function is to query Firestore, retrieve the corresponding set of image URLs, and use that to play the game of memory instead of our default icons. So at the top of the file, we need a reference to Firestore, similar to what we had in the create activity. So right here, I'll say private val db is equal to firebase.firestore. And let's also capture the value of the game being played. So it'll be private var game name is a nullable string, and it's initially going to be null because when you're playing a default game with just the icons that we've predefined, there is no game name. Um, it's only set when the user is playing either their own custom game or a custom game made by someone else. So back in the download game method, we're going to query Firestore inside of the games collection, that's where everything lives, and we're going to try and retrieve the document called game name. Let's get it, and then that operation might take some time. This is an asynchronous call, so we're going to add a on success listener. And we also will need to add a failure listener, and then this, this is easy, we're just going to kind of log this so we can keep track of um, what happened. Okay, so in the success case, here is where we're doing something interesting. We are going to get back a document which has one field in that document, which is called images, and that will correspond to a list of image URLs, a list of string. And so that mapping of taking this document, which is what we're going to get back here, and turning that into a Kotlin data class is something that Firestore will help us with. So we'll say document.toObject, and we want to map this to a data class that we're going to define. And I'm going to call it user image list. Like that. So let's define this now. Create class. And I want to put it into the models directory that we already have. And this is going to be a data class. There's no body. The only thing that we really need to define here is the field name of what this entity or this data class will hold. And there's only one, which is called images. So it'll be val images, and it's going to be a list of a string. And it's going to be nullable. And the reason it's nullable is because Firebase mandates that every time you do this kind of mapping between a document you get back from Firestore and into a data class, it needs to have a default value. And so it's going to have a default value of null. And one other thing that we should do is annotate this field with a property, property name. I'll say property name. 
images. And this is how a Firebase will know that okay, here's the key called images, which is defined over here, and it maps to this attribute, which is a list of string. Cool. So back in main activity, now that we've done this document that two object, we will get back a val user image list. If user image list is null, or if the images attribute of user image list is null, then something has gone wrong. And the shorthand for this is to do user image list question mark dot images. So we're going to log this as an error. Invalid custom game data from Firestore. Let's also put a snack bar here to just message this out to the user. CL root. And then this is the error case, so we're just going to return early here. Okay, so if you've gotten past this return statement, if you've, if you've gotten past this if block, that means that we have found a game successfully. So now we want to reset up the recycler view with this custom data. So first off, let's compute how many cards are in our memory game. So val num cards is equal to user image list dot size dot images dot size times two. So for example, if there are four images inside of our image list, that means that the total number of cards should be eight because we're making pairs. So now, given that we have eight cards, we can now figure out the board size. The board size has to be one of the enums that we've defined over here. It has to be either easy, medium, or hard. And what we know is we know the value. So we need to figure out how to take the value, 24, and map that to hard, 18 maps to medium, and eight maps to easy. And the way we're going to do this is by adding a, a companion object inside of the enum called fun get by value. And just as the name implies, based on the value that we, we pass in here, which is an integer, we're going to return one of these three enums. So we'll say the body of this function is going to be a one line function. We're going to look at all the values of this enum through this method called values. And we're going to find the first one among this such that the number of cards in that enum is equal to the value. So this is a nice, cute one-liner. And the reason this is valuable is now we can set the property board size from before based on the number of cards. So number of cards. And we can also set the game name to be the game name defined here. This actually leads to some naming conflicts. So I'm going to rename this local variable to be custom game name. And now it won't be ambiguous that I'm trying to set the property game name to equal the local variable game name. Okay, and so now we're, there's a complaint here board size value of requires a string, but the actual is a int. Oh, this should be get by value. Okay. The next thing we want to do is call this method setup board. But setup board has to actually now have information about what is a list of image URLs, right? And we are not actually saving that inside of any property. So let's add that as a property now. I'm going to add one more private member variable called custom game images. And this is going to be a list of string. And it'll be nullable because in the default case, this list will always be empty, right? It doesn't make sense to have a list of image URLs when we're just playing with the default icons. So we're going to set this equal right here when we query Firestore and get back a list of images. So this is going to be equal to user image list dot images. So now let's go into setup board and actually start using the custom game images variable that we have along with the game name. The objective here is we want to prefer using the custom image list if it's there over the icons because that means that the user is explicitly intending to play this custom game. So the change that we're going to make is we're going to pass in the custom game images as a constructor parameter on the memory game. So let's add this as a parameter. 
hit refactor. And we're going to call this custom images. And here, the memory cards that our memory game is going to contain will depend on whether custom images is set or not. So if it's not set, so if custom images is equal to null, that means we'll just do what we've already been doing, which is to look at the default icon list, grab some icons out of those, and create memory cards out of them. However, if custom images is not null, then the memory cards should instead be using the image URLs as the underlying picture of that memory card. So we're going to say val randomized images is equal to custom images. And we're going to get two copies of each image in that list, then randomize it. And now the list of memory cards is going to equal randomized images dot map and we're going to create a new memory card for each of these. So one thing you'll notice here is there's an issue, which is that this randomized images here is a list of string. That makes sense because each element is an image URL, which is a string. But memory card, if you remember, the first parameter is a identifier, which represents the image resource, the drawable resource. And we don't have that in the case of a custom game. So what we're going to do is add one more constructor parameter called image URL. And this is going to be of type string. And this will be optional because in the case of the default game, this is, doesn't make sense to have anything here. Having the default value of null here, we can create memory cards identically to how they were created before. But now if we wanted to, we can also specify an image URL. And that's what exactly what we're going to do over here and pass in IT for the second parameter. And now the first parameter, we need to pass in some identifier, which is an integer. And so in order to do that, we now need to figure out how can we take an image URL and turn it into a unique integer. And the easy way of doing this is by using a method called hash code. This is something that's defined on every single object, including strings. And the idea is that for two different strings, the probability of them having the same hash code is very, very small. It's almost impossible. And so by having it.hashcode, we're just basically taking the string, whatever it might be, and translating that into an integer. And that will be our new memory card. So almost done. In the memory board adapter now, this is where we are actually rendering that drawable from the default list of icons. That happens right here. We're saying image button dot set image resource. So if the card is face up, we are setting the image resource to be that drawable resource otherwise the background. However, in this case, we don't want to do this, right? In the case of a custom game image, if there is a image URL on the memory card, we would, instead of setting an image resource, we want to actually download that image from that URL. So in order to download an image and show it into an image view, there are a couple libraries on, on Android, which make this super easy. And the one that we're going to use is called Picasso. So if you just Google for Android Picasso GitHub, you'll come to this page. And what you should do is scroll down to the download section and copy this line, implementation. Now add this line into the build.gradle, which is located in the app module. Tap on sync now. And going back into memory board adapter, now we can use Picasso to render the image at that image URL inside of this image button. So the logic will be, if the memory card is face up, then we should check is the image URL of this memory card not equal to null? If it's not null, that means that there is a valid custom image at this memory card that we should be rendering instead of a resource identifier. So we'll call Picasso. So we have to import that, dot get, and we're gonna load in the image URL into the image button. That's how simple it is to use Picasso. Otherwise, we're going to do what we had before, which is image button dot set image resource on the memory card identifier. And this is going to be one of the icons that we had created. If the memory card is face down, then we're going to go into this else branch. And then we're going to do, we're going to set the 
launcher background. So just, just that. All right, so we just wrote a lot of code. Hopefully it all makes sense. Let's try it out. Try it out. So I'm gonna run the app and we're going to create a new game and save it. And then when we save it, we're gonna come back into the main activity and hopefully we'll be able to play this new custom game that we created. So I'm going to create a custom game, make it easy so we don't have too many images to upload. And let's do this. The four images here and say play game as the name, tap on save. All right, so we can see the progress bar, upload complete. So now we should be going back into main activity and main activity should at that point fetch all these image URLs from Firestore and display them in the memory game. Let's see if it works. So now it all looks identical to what was there before because right now everything is face down. But when we flip over a card, you can see, hey, it actually downloads this image that we had, which is amazing. And I got lucky with a match on the first one. Okay, so this is working. So we're able to download the images from this custom game and we can play the game like normal. So the logic of figuring out which two images are the same works because the hash code of these images, if they're the same image, should be the same. So that logic is all identical to what we had from before. Awesome, so we won and we have the same logic there from before. All right, so to finish off, there are two really quick things I wanna do back in main activity. So first off, in the setup board method, one thing that would be nice is as soon as we call setup board, if there is a custom game which the user is playing, we should change the title of, of this to be the name of the game rather than the default my memory. So in this case, we should hopefully have seen play underscore game as a title instead of my memory. And we can do that pretty easily just by saying support action bar dot title and set this equal to game name. And the game name might be null. So in the case that it is null, then we want to set it equal to the name of the app. It's r.string.app name. That's one thing I wanted to do. Second thing I wanted to do is a bug fix. So right now, one thing you'll notice is that if we create a, a new default game of a different size, we're going to trigger this method, show new size dialog. And so if the user is playing a particular game and they create a medium sized game, then we're going to call setup board. But the issue is that setup board will, might still be using the cached data, the saved data inside of game name and custom game images. And so basically the, the key thing here is we need to reset these values every time the user goes back to a default game. So in the show new size dialog, right before we set up the board, let's just null out the game name and also the custom game images should also be null. Awesome, a huge progress in this video. What I wanna do next is allow the user to enter in the game name that they want to play using a menu option. So if you're enjoying this, hit that like button and subscribe so you know when the next part comes out. Bye.